spectacular. Okay, information technology and your learning resources. How do you learn things? By staying absolutely silent, staring deeply and meaningfully at your computer and hoping that I don't call on you. Guess what? Ever heard of the Socratic method? I'm a huge fan, which means I'm gonna start pointing at people randomly if I don't get people shouting out answers to things. How do you learn? Find things on the internet. Okay. Ask questions. Ask questions. Killer. Keep going. People. People. Asking humans. Awesome way to do things. Out of style, but you know, I feel like it's retro. Okay. Hands on. Hands on. All right. Keep going. Observing. Observing. More. Throw them on out. Failing. Failing. Oh. New favorite student. There we go. Failing is awesome. An expert is defined as someone who has made every mistake possible within a very limited band of human experience. I did not make that up, but it's a super cool quote, and I like it, okay? How else do you learn? How about some learning styles? How do people learn differently from one another? What's a learning style? Visually. Visually, what's another learning style? Auditory. Auditory, what else? Kinetic. Kinetic. You know what we're hearing right now? Description of what? Touch, sight, yeah. sound. Other ways to learn? Taste. Yeah. Taste? Yeah. What does that taste like? I just ate a, a twice baked chocolate coconut croissant mm. from Bell Epicurean up here. I learned something, which is that I can love that. <laughs> okay. I might be a little sugar high right now, and I'm okay with that fact. <laughs> All right. What is the other sense? No. Smelling. What's a very important piece of information we might get right now if we smelled smoke? Friggin' run? <laughs> or yeah, stroke, exactly. And there, right there is a great answer to this, which is maybe it's a stroke. And guess what that means? Different kinds of input, even the same input, can have different kinds of causes. Just because there is an effect doesn't mean that you understand what the cause is. You smell smoke. What do you know in that moment? Fire. That you smell smoke. The only thing you know is, I smell smoke. I have identified that as smoke. You don't know the cause of it yet. You smell burnt toast, and it might be a stroke. You smell something that smells like, I don't know, roasting pig fat. What does that tell you? Barbecue. Barbecue. I clearly have not eaten enough today. Go <laughs> ahead. Or humans. Or humans are burning. I like that guy, too. OK. <laughs> or humans are burning on a yes, long pig. Excellent. Uh, I am broadcasting this right now. That's awesome. All right. <laughs> So what else? How else do we learn? What, what happens when we put all of those things together and we start learning things? What do we call that? All very good words for something that is a complex situation, but knowledge, data, what they call the accumulation of knowledge, not accumulation, but accumulation of knowledge. All right? What does that mean to you? What is knowledge? Is it? There's a lot of information out there, but information can be or true. true or false. Exactly. So if information can be true or false, what is the inherent value of information? Perception. The perception of what that information is. And knowledge is information plus perception. Knowledge gives you a choice. Knowledge gives you choices. It gives you information. It gives you, and when we say information, we're often conflating knowledge and information. But it gives you a choice, it gives you a perspective, it gives you a framework to operate in the world. That framework, that way of experiencing the world, of finding things out, of determining whether or not you have found the right answer to a question or not, is part of developing a mindset that you're going to use as you go through life, no matter what field you're in. Whether you go into English, or information security, or carving marble into statues, or you dig ditches, or you become the president, or you do both of those things. You're still operating within this framework that tells you how to get information. Someone who said, I think it would now, Keegan, it was you that said that um, a great way to get information is ask people, okay? How do you ask a lot of people at once the same question? Internet. Internet. I like that answer too. Exactly. Slack. Very good. Social media. Oh, I love that one. I love the ungoogleable, right? Like, 
Someone please give me a picture that's going to make me feel better today that involves a blue cat with something funny underneath it that isn't Grumpy Cat. Google that shit. <laughs> right? You can't. But I could ask Facebook right now, and by the end of this class, in fact, I'm deeply tempted to do exactly that, ask Facebook right now, and somebody would have sent me a picture of a blue cat with a funny caption underneath it that would absolutely make my day. That is the beauty of what we get to do right now and how we get to find information out. Okay. The things that I'm going to talk to you about today, and I started us off on this without giving you a clear structure of what I'm going to teach you about how to learn information technology, is first, what is learning about information technology? Second of all, what are the techniques and tools and tricks that you can use to do it so that you can take the questions that we've been creating here and then put them all together into such a way that you're adding to your framework instead of creating noise in your head? And the last thing that we're going to talk about, the third thing we're going to talk about is when do you not use this? When do you choose to try on your own? When do you stop trying to find the information and start creating it on your own? Okay? So we've had some really great definitions of knowledge of how to find information in this class. What are some of the tools that you can use on the internet? And by the way, let's, let's just come up right now with a really good question that we want to find the answer to in the next five minutes. Somebody throw out a great question that they want to have answered. And if it's a quote from Douglas Adams, one, you get points, but two, we can't use it because somebody's already answered it on the internet. What's a question you want to know the answer to? What's that? What is technological singularity? What's the singularity? What's the technological singularity? That's a cool question. Does everybody in here know what the singularity is? The quote singularity? Oh, I love it. That's a great question. OK, so let's get started here. And one of the things I'm going to ask you to do is work in your groups on a couple of these things for just a few seconds at a time. So if we were going to ask the question, what is the technological singularity? What's the very first thing that you do? Wikipedia is a great answer to that question. Why Wikipedia? Because it's a conglomeration of people. Because it's a conglomeration of people's information and opinions on something? Yeah, I've been there. It's called 4chan.com. Don't go there. Wikipedia is something different. It's a lot more vetted. What's good about it being vetted? What are we going for when we find a vetted site to find information from? Professional Okay. Repeatable. Repeatable. Reputable. 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 Yeah. Okay, it, no, it's cool. Hey, it's awesome to learn words by reading them and then saying them out loud for the first time. I have done some really funny things with that, but I always admire people more who learn that way. Spit it out, and now you know too, right? So in the back back there, I know you're, I, I can actually hear what you're talking about too. What are the questions that you would ask Wikipedia, and why Wikipedia? Why vetted? I think Jean had an opinion, actually. No opinion? Okay, go ahead, we. Why is Wikipedia an authority? See, now we're getting into some really interesting information here, and it has to do, again, that's a very good question, with the nature of how we learn about technology, or about anything, but specifically about technology, since almost everything that we're learning is on the internet. And that question, why is vetted any better than just someone's expert opinion, is a very, very good one. There's people that think both ways. Sometimes when I say it's a good question, I mean it means I don't know the answer to that question. I have an opinion on the answer to that question, but no one's ever settled on why an expert opinion is or is better or worse than the accumulated knowledge of Wikipedia. I could tell you that having lots of eyes on Wikipedia leads to having fewer factual errors than most expert opinions, but sometimes doesn't lead to as deep an analysis. So there's values in both of those, right? a deep an analysis of something like, say, the Cuban Missile Crisis, you will find fewer factual errors, things like, this happened on May 21st instead of March 21st, 1962, right? So, well, that isn't the time for the Cuban Missile, anyway. So, October 22nd. Okay, so imagine October 22nd to 28th instead of uh, 1962. Instead of that, read um, September 22nd to 28th, 1962 in an expert's opinion. That mistake wouldn't be made in Wikipedia, but it's likely that an expert who'd studied the Cuban Missile Crisis would have very deep anal uh, analysis and understanding of the situation, right? Yes? Okay, what's an expert beyond the quote that I gave you? Because you're all staring at me like, yes, an expert would clearly have a deeper understanding of the situation. You have no idea what I'm talking about on that one, I can tell. I'm st I stop when I see the faces go... Bzz. 
a person who knows more than you do, good God, help us all. <laughs> on what? On a certain subject. Exactly. Okay. Yes? Okay, how does society deem that? Um, college and work experience. Okay, college, number of people that respect that opinion, piece of paper. Piece of paper. Okay. Uh, sometimes your skill set. Skill set. So a lot of people agree that that person knows what they're talking about. How is that any different than a Wikipedia article? Exactly. It's a bunch of people who have thrown all of that information together. So the difference in the two is the source of the information that you're getting. Determine what you need for the situation that you're in. What other than Wikipedia and experts? How would you find the answer to what is the technological similarity other than Wikipedia and experts? Google. Google? What would Google take you to? Cars Wikipedia. Yes. OK. What else would Google take you to? Um, People that are associated with the subject. I have got $20 right now that says if I Google what is the technological singularity that Neil deGrasse Tyson's Twitter account is going to pop up in the top 20 results, <laughs> right? Because that's what people will go to is they'll go to, they'll go to listen to and read somebody that they think knows something about the topic. And Neil deGrasse Tyson is a great advocate for making sure that that complex technological information gets into people's heads easily and simply. He's a genius at it at encapsulating complex information in such a way that it's simple and easy to understand. I have to tell you that is a profound gift that that guy has. Okay? What other sources would you go to? Say that I told you go find, instead of just what is the technological singularity, say that I told you to solve a Python programming problem. What would be the site that you would go to? Code Academy. Code Academy. Killer. What other sites? Some Python forum. Some Python forum. What? Some Python forum. There's lots. OK, Google's forums on programming are actually not as good as you might expect. You would, you would want to use Google as a tool to find the top rated ones, but Google itself has programming forums, and I've not found them to be much help. Uh, Guess what the top, so, what's that? Microsoft Virtual Academy. Microsoft Virtual Academy, not for Python. You'd want to go there for something like implementation of virtual boxes on Azure or something like that. But yes, for, the tool belongs to the situation, OK? What's another way that I might have you solve that Python programming problem? I bet you Keegan knows. Um, if I were doing it, I would look for like research on Python, mm -hmm. um, like which Python programs work best in Google. And then you would what? Uh, and then I would start doing it. <laughs> I'd Good. Follow a tutorial. And how would you get help with it? Um, if I were in this position, I would ask someone in this class. Bravo. Ask people for help. Learning with other people is the single best way that you can do this. Talk to humans. Get off the internet as fast as you possibly can and into trying to practice it and do it yourself. All right? What's, uh, if I was trying to, and I'm, I'm asking you this question because I am personally right now trying to solve a Python programming problem. I have one in my head right now. It's a really cool one from the Twitter API that I'm trying to fix. What's that? GitHub, GitHub is a really great place to go to. In person? I would take that problem and have taken that problem to the local Python programming group. It's called Puppy, Puget Sound uh, Python user group. Yes, it looks like poopy, I know. So does this make sense? Do you understand where you can go to to find things? I think I told you the first day, and I don't know if you really, if you really got it yet, and you might not until you've done a lot of, of looking up answers on the internet for, pro for programming problems, but there is a great joke headline out there, computer programming officially to be renamed Googling Stack Overflow for shit. <laughs> Stack Overflow is the site you're going to go to for basically any programming problem. I'm going to make a caveat on this. If you have a feminine username or a feminine avatar, you'll get downvoted more than the dudes do, so avoid that. Um, I, Fight the battle if you want to. I don't fight that battle. I've just created an alternate persona for the site that will get upvoted when my, uh, my name and face won't, which is annoying because this is part of my brand, you know, who I am. I want people to be able to find that I'm helping and answering people's questions on Stack Overflow, and I don't get to do that. So just be aware that that's a problem. Um, 
as with so many of the other portions of this, very few times is it ever intentional. This is just something that happens on that site. One or two people have poisoned the well for a lot of folks, and a lot of people just don't recognize that that's happening, okay? It's not a, it's not a thing where we're going to be screaming about it and saying it's somebody's fault. But I have found that you will have better responses on Stack Overflow if you don't use a, a female avatar or username. Does that suck? Yeah, totally sucks, I know. Learn to code first, then take over the world and fix the problem. Yeah, the, oh, there we go. New favorite student. <laughs> All right. That's your plan, and that should be your plan, because you know what? Each and every one of us, we could take and fight these battles all day long, but the best possible option is succeed. Nothing succeeds like success. <laughs> all right? Go kick some ass first. Then pick a battle to fight and win it when you've got the power to do it. Right? Okay. The last part of this is when don't we use the Internet? I've already started to hint at it by get off the internet as fast as you possibly can and start working with people to solve your problems, right? Okay. When do you run into the end of the internet's usefulness when it comes to solving a problem? Like the technological singularity, like a like a how to write a string in Python. When you want to keep it secret. That's a great answer. When you want to keep it secret. Okay. When else? When everything else comes with the same answer, that is a great answer to that question. When everything comes up with the same answer, why is that? What, what do you think might be happening if you get past the first page of results and then everyone has the same answer to the problem? That is a possibility. It's been rigged. Unlikely, but a possibility. There's another solution out there that no one knows about. There's another solution. There's always another solution out there that no one knows about, and I like that answer. How else? Go back to classes if you want to, but one of the reasons you might find everyone answering the same question the same way is no one friggin' knows. They're all repeating and reposting the same links again and again for a problem none of them have managed to solve. What does that give you? The opportunity to solve it, right? Which means you need to take and learn what you can about the problem, then post your own solution. Yes? Okay. When you've gotten to the end of the internet, and that's an ongoing joke, but when you've gotten to the end of the internet, when you've ended your capacity to find new information on the problem you're solving, get off the internet. Also, be very careful on chiming in on problems that, not that you don't understand, but if you have not solved similar problems, like you're, you're learning Python or something like that, and you see everyone posting information about the problem, the reason that you often find 10 different sites with the same answer is someone is trying to be helpful, going and reposting the same material again and again and again someplace else. All that's really doing is, is kind of jamming up the works. And a good post with the real answer is the roto router for that situation. Okay, What other reasons do you have to get off the internet and go figure out your own answers to information technology? Big old class of infotech right now that you could absolutely have a, a reason to do that with. Put a soldering iron in your hand and go build the machine. Figure out whether it'll work or not. Print the instructions, go out to the workshop, and try to lay down circuits. See what happens. I am not a hardware person. I'm not a hardware tech. But I know that people who do that side of technology, they get on the internet to talk about the cool stuff they've done. But most of the things that you're going to find are awesome pictures and diagrams, which aren't as searchable, which means that you need to build up your knowledge of where to go find those hardware tools on the internet as well. Okay. Any other thoughts here about when you want to get off the internet? Just from personal experience, after about five hours, your butt's going to be numb. Stand up and move around. Anybody else? Seriously, you'll be kind of tired. You need to stand up and move around every once in a while. If you don't get the blood flowing in your brain, you won't be able to come up with new answers to questions. What's that? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. When you're bored of using the internet, because really, how do you get bored of using the internet? I love technology. There's so many cool things around there. But if you find yourself skipping away from the problem at hand and going, God, I wonder what everybody's doing on Facebook right now, it's probably time to stand up. You're not going to solve the problem anymore that day. And it's okay to recognize that every person has about three to six hours a day maximum of deep braining flow time. I have less than that usually. I've got about two and a half to three hours of deep 
concentrated time that I can spend on a problem before I'm done with heavy braining for the day. And the rest of my day is going to be emails or meetings or negotiating or going to have coffee with somebody. You know, but deep, deep intellectual work is very physically difficult. Extremely physically difficult. You won't notice your electrolytes dropping. You won't notice yourself having any problems or issues with your ability to learn new things. So get off the internet at that point. Go get a coffee. There's a great quote from something like 2,000 years ago in Latin. To solve a problem, take it for a walk. 